Let's take a look at our Parallax Hero widget. Now this is a, a very cool widget. This creates a really nice effect, um, but may take a while to, for you to get your head around how it works. So let's just put an instance on the page. Now again, this doesn't render in design view. So we have this um, icon here telling us what this panel is for easy reference, but will um, be viewable in the preview mode. So let's see what happens when we preview currently. Now we can see that the images aren't loaded up. However, we do have the outlines of where the images would be. And we can see that as we move our mouse around, the images um, work in parallax with the mouse. So we get this really nice effect. Let's see this in a real world example. We've used this on our new water park template. Um, and we've used this in here to show you it in action. Let's preview this in the browser. And you can see here when it's loaded up, we have this really nice image and we've taken it apart and created layers. So we've got a splash in the front, then we've got the girl, then we've got the slide, and then we've got the background. And as the mouse moves around, we have this parallax action happening. And it really is very effective for making a, um, action on the page and for creating this three dimensional view. So it, it's a, it's a really lovely tool to work with, very easy to use, but it does rely on you having really nice, nicely sliced images on the page. Let's take another look at an, a simple example though. So I'm going to go back to my widget here and we can see that we have these images listed. So I'm just going to take a look at the uh, at files that we've added. So we can see we've got uh, 1, 2, 3 PNG and then 4 is a JPEG. So the background image here, so we've got six images that we can load up, but we want to load up a particular sequence. So let's switch off images one and two. We don't need those front two here, but we do need image six. Image six is our background image. So I'm going to change that to, I think it was four dot JPEG. And the sixth image is a special image because it's used as a background. So it will scale that image correctly. Uh, now we've got image three, image two, and then image one. Okay, so let's preview this. There, we can see that we have our um, scroll motion, our parallax motion happening here. Let's just um, make this Let's move this up the page a bit and we'll make this full width and bring that up there. Let's take a look at our settings here. So we've got um, four images selected. We've got left and right motion yeah. and we can lock the left and right movement. So I just want this to move left and right. So I'm going to set that at five but I don't want any up and down motion, so I'm going to set that to zero. We want to scale the images and we want to use the clip frame because we don't want the images coming outside of the parallax. So let's, let's preview that again. So now we can see that we have this really nice movement happening. Now the background image here, because it's the actual div that's moving, you won't be able to um, get this image to go all the way to the edge. So there's some other techniques that you can use to make sure that that is hidden. The edge is hidden if you need it to be. But I think you'll agree that that's a, a really nice effect there. Let's switch on um, some more motion here. Let's actually switch this to three. And go back to our preview. And we can see now we have this movement, up and down movement as well, that is uh, happening with the mouse. And it really is quite effective in creating this nice parallax motion. This would be very complex to do in a handwritten code environment, but with the power of Muse widgets, we can do this in just a few clicks.